welcome to a Facebook Live follow-up of Inside the OR. You saw us live stream a trigger finger and carpal tunnel surgery about two weeks ago, and today we're going to follow up with Dana Dempsey. Nice to see you again. Dana Dempsey Cumberworth. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Dana Dempsey Cumberworth, who was in the OR with us, and she's going to answer some of those follow-up questions that you all had. But before we begin, can we just talk to Dana? We're going to talk to Dana a little bit about her life as a PA. So if you could explain a little bit about what you do on a daily basis to our viewers, that would be great. Sure, so as a PA, um, I guess for my personal PA job, I, I assist um, in the OR, um, as you saw for the trigger finger and the carpal tunnel. So I do that about two days a week, and the rest of the week I am in the clinic. So I'm between three different offices all over Charlotte, and so I see about 50 to 100 patients a week on my own. Um, with Dr. Shattered and I, we're a team, so I assist him when he needs my help, um, you know, in clinic, but most of the time I'm in my own clinic. I take call, we take, um, you know, we work urgent care shifts um, after hours, so we have a great Ortho Carolina urgent care that's available when our office is closed um, in the evenings on the weekdays and on the weekends, so the uh, PAs like myself will cover those shifts. So we, have a, we do a little bit of everything, I mean, whether it's fracture care, or, um, you know, just stitching and stitch removal, um, you know, diagnosing, taking x-rays, prescribing medicines. I mean, we do a little bit of everything, so it's pretty cool. Awesome, yeah, busy life. It is, it is. <laughs> it's busy, but it's fun, so I like it a lot. Awesome, so we're gonna dive into these questions, and our first one is from Ella, and she is referring to the fact that our patient was under local anesthesia and remained awake. So she wants to know, do you have to stay awake for those types of surgeries? So our patient, um, stayed awake, but that is not the common procedure. Um, that is absolutely fine. When it comes down to it, the surgery is, is relatively a small, short case. Um, usually it's about five minutes for a carpal tunnel um, and five minutes for a trigger finger. So when it's that short time frame, it's okay for the patient to be under local anesthesia where they're wide awake, but at the same time, it's fine to do some sleepy medicine. Um, if people have had a colonoscopy, right. um, it's kind of like a sleepy twilight sleep. Usually that's the, the preferred method um, that we choose, okay. but honestly, it's up to the patient, so. Okay, and our next question is from Barb, and she said, so if just the thumb is involved, is that a carpal tunnel issue? No, so when it comes to the thumb, that could be many things. So I guess it depends on the symptoms. Um, you know, with, with the carpal tunnel symptoms, that can involve the thumb through the ring finger, um, as far as numbness and tingling. Um, if it, we're talking about trigger finger, that could be any 10 fingers, um, could be involved with that kind of catching, popping sensation that we were kind of showing with Mr. Mooney. Um, for his surgery. So I guess it just depends more on, we'd have to kind of evaluate the, the problem, I guess. Okay, and our next question is from Chris, and he's referring to a more specific part of the surgery, but he says, does the cut tunnel regrow back to normal or does it remain open in the hands? So when we release the tunnel of the carpal tunnel or the tunnel that the tendon lives in for trigger finger, um, the idea, right, is that we've opened it up but in real, realistically, I mean, it does fill in with something, right? So it's probably scar tissue that fills in to kind of cover that area again. Um, so the idea is that that tunnel is by definition wider. Um, so there's a very small likelihood that it comes back, um, probably less than 5% for either carpal tunnel or the trigger finger, so. Okay, and Cynthia also asks, can this help get the motion back from a broken finger? So, so can those surgeries, either trigger finger or carpal tunnel, if someone does have a broken finger, can the same kind of procedure be used to get that motion back? So that's an interesting question. Um, so when it comes to broken fingers, that's, that's a bone problem, right? So if there's a deficit with range of motion because a finger has been broken, um, the carpal tunnel and the trigger finger releases, those types of surgeries, um, wouldn't be used to benefit the range of motion. Okay. But now if it's range of motion limited from the trigger finger, like some people can't make a fist when they're trying to, when they have a trigger finger, you know, maybe they, maybe they have a finger that they can't bend down all the way, or maybe they can't straighten it out all the way. Um, yes, the surgery okay. helps with that range so of motion. So just the type of broken. Exactly, so, so a broken bone would not be benefited from this type of procedure. Okay, and in this, a similar vein, Becky asked, would this type of surgery, um, I don't, we're not sure if she's referring to the trigger finger or carpal tunnel procedure, mm -hmm. but would it work for arthritis? So unfortunately with arthritis, um, there, are, there are different types of arthritis. 
it would not directly benefit arthritis, but sometimes certain arthritis is like rheumatoid arthritis per se, can actually cause this to happen, um, just because it's more of a soft tissue issue, where osteoarthritis, which is the wear and tear arthritis, where right. our knees hurt, our hips hurt, kind of, we've been using our, our bones for yes. many years, <laughs> right? Um, so that wear and tear arthritis, where our cartilage is going down, that that aches and pains in the hand would not be benefited from the, from that those surgeries. That would not be an indication to do it. Okay. So. Um, and our next question is from Peggy, and she said, how much is it a problem to have trigger finger procedure if one is taking Eliquis? Eliquis, so, Eliquis. yeah, so Eliquis, <laughs> Eliquis is a, um, for everyone's knowledge, um, is- Yes, it, explain. It, yes, <laughs> it, so that is, a, that is a pretty heavy, hefty duty blood thinner. And so okay. someone who has had, you know, strokes or has had issues with their heart or, you know, has had, you know, some sort of blood clot in the past, okay. they may be put on Eliquis, which is something that will keep their blood thin. And so with surgery, specifically bigger surgeries, you have to stop Eliquis five days before surgery because we don't want a bleeding issue during the, the, the operative procedure, right? Yes. So with a small soft tissue procedure like the carpal tunnel or the trigger finger, um, having Eliquis on board, uh, meaning that they haven't discontinued it, um, is okay. Um, you know, we have medicines that can help to, to accommodate that and kind of prevent the bleeding and then we have good control of the the, the things that we have um, in order to control bleeding after surgery okay. so so eloquence with this small right, right. tissue um, surgery is not an issue but bigger things obviously would be a consideration okay. to stop that so. is that a common medication that you find a lot of your patients on um i guess it just depends um we, there is a, a, a no i wouldn't say it's a large population of right. patients but it's, it is a common medicine that people get put on for for those types of issues so. okay awesome and if nancy asked if you have multiple trigger fingers on both hands what do you do so we've actually <laughs> encountered this many times um so I think the most, I don't know if Dr. Shatterton and I have operated on all five fingers on one hand. I know for a fact that we've operated on all, on four of the five. What would that even look like? So basically <laughs> you saw the incision yes. that was um, created that's, you know, about an inch long incision at that, in that palmar area. Um, literally we would just do that to the, say, say your index, middle, and your ring finger were all sticking and triggering, right? Well, we're we're in the operating room, we're doing surgery, there's no reason to bring you back for multiple procedures, so why not just do it all and yes. heal at one time? So literally you just have three different separate incisions for those three problems, um, and then with the recovery, we might just maybe have you wear a bandage for a longer period okay. of time since you have more stitches, um, so this way you don't cause any injury to your wounds that are healing. So, but yeah, we can do surgery on, all, on multiple, and there's oh. obviously we did Mr. Mooney's carpal tunnel and trigger finger at the same time too, yeah, so. That's fascinating, you can yeah. have multiple on one hand or both. Absolutely, <laughs> unlucky, but honestly. Yes, very unlucky, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. And our last question is from Henry, and I know this was your first time doing a live surgery, but you, were you worried about anything going wrong live going into it? I mean, that's a, that's a great question. So uh, Dr. Shatter and I talked about that, you know, that was our first live surgery right. and there's not a lot mm -hmm. of live surgeries. There's what the other shoulder surgery. A rotator cuff uh, surgery, yes. yes. So um, of course there's always the concern about, you know, something going wrong, right? Like a complication, but um, you know, Dr. Chatterton didn't change the way he operated. I didn't change the way I assist. Um, we didn't assume that there was going to be a complication. Ultimately, with those types of surgeries, um, complications and problems occur about 1% of the time. So, you know, there is nothing different um, that we did that day. Um, you know, you don't act differently for the camera or anything course, like that. Um, and obviously, you know, just for the purpose of the future, it'd be probably fun to do some more, um, you know, if we're if of course you guys want to see more. So. Of course, no, I think all the viewers on Facebook, they've been continuing to ask us to do more after that. They love seeing them and just judging by the questions they've submitted, it shows that people are very interested in live surgery. And thank you again for being part of our live surgery and for being with, here with us today. Absolutely, well thanks for having us. Dr. Chatter and I really had a good time doing it and I hope you guys got to see some good stuff. And maybe next time we'll get a little bit closer with uh, zooming in. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you all for joining us today. And if you have any questions, head to orthocarolina.com.